Hey, I'm Tim Ostrow, and that's Glenn Powell. We're Group 11 for our particle argon project for MGR3171. So, show off how we do this real quick. We have two sensors, a thermistor and a pH sensor. The pH sensor sends data to argon 1, and the thermistor sends it to argon 2. And they both talk to each other using publish and subscribe. The argon 1 with the pH sensor sends pH data to the argon 2. Argon 2 sends the temperature data to argon 1. Now, argon 1 takes the temperature data and converts to a final pH because temperature has an inverse effect on pH. And argon 2 then takes that pH data and lights up a light based on whether it's in range or not. And of course, the temperature data is sent to argon 1 to convert it. So both these two argons send that data to the particle cloud, which in turn sends it to ThinkSpeak and the particle app. Now, we'll go ahead and demonstrate how this works real quick. For you. So, computer's on the side, sorry uh, yep. about that. Great. So, All right. As you can see here, we are two argons and our sensors. The thermistor is in the water, kind of simulating a pool. And the pH sensor is in a little bit of pool water sample because you know, it would be hard to do this outside. Now, over here, we have our data shown. Where we have the temperature coming in in degrees Celsius and the pH at about 7.37 in that range, which is where you want pool water to generally be. Now, we'll go ahead and take this thing out of the water real quick to show you that, hey, this thing actually does work despite its large amount of issues with zeroing that we've had. So we'll go ahead and show you real quick. We'll give it a few seconds because it's on about a 10 second or 20 second update interval, I think. There we so go, course. temperatures relatively around the same and pH will be about, should be around zero, some, somewhere. Yeah, yeah about okay. zero now that it's, um, and the LED light came on because it's at zero on this second part of uh, argon. Yep. And now once it goes back to seven, the LED light should turn back off, signifying that, hey, we're good to go. We'll give it a minute to update real quick. Basically as a warning light, because if your pH is above or below a given range between 7 and 7.6 pH, then it's slightly dangerous. And there we go, LED's off, and your children are safe in the pool. Very good. So we have this box right here, which is usually what we would use to contain it. It's not the best, it's one of our worst iterations, but it was the fastest to produce. So here, this is the lid we put on it, but we don't have the lid used. We're using it as a makeshift pool. So we'll go ahead and put these in here to show you how you, you might do it. So usually you could put either of the two wires in here and have the sensors coming out the side or through the holes, just like that. And this one you have to tilt sideways because this is too high for the lid, but overall they both fit in there pretty well. And that's about how it works. We have the live data here on Things Speak, yep, Things Speak for the pool sensor, for the temperature, and for the pH. This graph looks really weird, but it's just fluctuating between 19 and 21, so. Plus, it, Things Speak doesn't recognize decimals, it just does whole numbers. And then here we're holding that seven, drops down, comes back up. Yep. And with the box, obviously this isn't very buoyant looking. Um, that's because it's meant to be sitting beside the pool and these drop down into the water and gather data. So yeah, that's yep. about it for our project. Yep. Group, this has been group 11 and our wonderful pool sensor project. Go. We just read the project description, forgot to show my face in the video, but I was here, I was recording the video, this is my face. And you're Glenn Powell. I'm Glenn Powell, yes. Yeah, and I'm Tim Ostrow behind the camera. Yep, all right.